right welcome back to mr hassan's mass channel now here we have a question from an old paper from january 2015 this is from the old c34 um, syllabus which um, this particular question is integration by substitution which is now in the p4 um, specification so that's what i'm going to save it under and we're asked to use integration by substitution to find the exact value of the integral of 1 over 4 minus x squared to the power of 3 over 2 with respect to x between the limits of 0 and root 3. Okay, so first of all, when you're doing any type of integration by substitution, there are different ways you can uh, go about it, but I particularly like this particular method here, which I find always everything works out nice, nice and neatly and things just you know, just go very smoothly when you use this method. So the first thing I do, whatever the expression I have, you know, inside the integral sign up to the dx here, I, I just call that y first. So this is the integral of 1 over, so this is basically the integral of y with respect to x. So this is the integral of y with respect to x. Okay, so that's what I'm going to call this. This is the integral of y with respect to x, and here we have the x limits, x1 and x2. And I want to use the substitution x equals 2 sine theta. So I've got to introduce a uh, substitution of theta into here. I okay, have to introduce like a third variable, you could say, of theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to make this y dx d theta d theta. Now this is the same as that because you can think of the d theta is cancelling out. This is actually y dx. So y dx and then the new variable that you have to introduce D th theta, so I'm going to put d theta d theta. If it was, for example, u equals something, I would put dx du and du. Right? So now I've got to change my limits in terms of theta. Okay, because whatever's here, and all the terms in here have to now be expressed in terms of theta. No x's now. So whatever, whatever y was, it has to be replaced. Okay, this is y here, it has to be replaced in terms of theta. So let me start with that first. So y has to be expressed in terms of theta. So I have y equals 4 minus x squared to the power of 3 over 2. Now I know x is 2 sine theta, so I can say that this is 1 over 4 minus 2 sine theta squared to the power of 3 over 2. So that's the first thing. I'll just write that in the place of this. Okay, so this is going to become the integral between the limits of... I'll, I'll put the limits in afterwards as well. Just leave that for now. Blank. But the y part is going to be 1 over... 4 in brackets minus in this little bracket 2 times the sine of theta squared. So I've replaced this x with 2 sine theta and that whole bracket there is to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, and then I've got to find the x d theta. So I've, I've got the y part. This this is the y part here. I've replaced the, the x in y with theta. Now I've got the dx d theta part. So I know that x equals 2 times sine theta. So dx d theta, if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, this is going to become 2 times cosine theta. So that's a simple one. dx d theta is just, so I'll have times 2 cosine theta. Then I've got d theta. Now what I've got left to do is to write the limits. So I know that x equals 2 sine theta. So I can say that means uh, sine theta is equal to x over 2. So therefore I can say theta is equal to the inverse sine of x over 2. So if I want to write the limits in terms of theta now, I replace um, the x with root 3 first. So I have theta equals inverse sine of root 3 over 2. Now we have to give our answers, um, you know, our angles in terms of in radians because we're using differentiation integration. Calculus must always be when you've got trig functions, you must use radians. So this is root 3 over 2, inverse sine of root 3 over 2 is 60 degrees, which is pi over pi over 3. Okay, so that's pi over 3. And that's when x equals root 3. And when x equals 0, then theta equals inverse sine of 0, which is 0. So my limits are pi over 3 and 0 in terms of theta. So now we've got everything now in terms of theta. So we have y dx d theta, d theta, the two angles, the two limits in terms of the angles in radians, in terms of theta, and now we're ready to start trying to simplify this. So what I'm going to do now, I'll call this 0 and pi over 3. I can write this on top, 2 cosine theta over, 
Now I can start simplifying this. First thing I can see, this is going to be 4 sine squared theta. So I have in this bracket 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. And that's to the power of 3 over 2 d theta. So that's the first step. Next, I can see that this is a common factor of 4 inside this bracket. So I can take the 4 out. So I'll have here pi over 3. And this is going to be 2 cosine theta. I'll take out this 4. So I have 4 times 1 minus sine squared theta. And all of that to the power of 3 over 2. With respect to theta, I can start using this space now. So again, I haven't started integrating it. I'm just simplifying this as much as I can. So here, this um, 2 cosine theta on top over... Now, this is like 4 to the power of 3 over 2. And this is like... Now, 1 minus sine squared theta, I know that that's the same as cosine squared theta. That's like cosine squared theta to the power of 3 over 2 with respect to theta. Still, I haven't started integrating yet. So let me carry on with the integral sign. Now, I've got my limits of pi over 3 and 0. So this, this is still 2 cosine theta over... Now, 4 to the power of 3 over 2 is like 4... The square root of 4 cubed. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So that's 8. And this is like the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine theta. Cosine theta cubed is cosine cubed theta. So that's going to be 8 cosine cubed theta with respect to theta. So the 2 cancels out with the 8 gives you 4. So I can take that 1 quarter out of the integral. So I always like to do that. So I have 0 pi over 3. And this is like the cosine theta cancels with the cosine squared theta. leaves you with 1 over cosine squared theta. So it cancels out with the cosine cubed theta to leave you with cosine squared theta. So now I know 1 over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. That's a reciprocal. 1 over cosine is reciprocal is secant, secant theta. So this gives you 1 over 4 times the integral between 0 and pi over 3. And 1 over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. Okay, and I know how to integrate secant squared theta. That's one of our, our standard results. And it's actually in the formula book, okay, as I think as a differential of tan theta is secant squared theta. Therefore, the opposite is true. So this is going to give me tan theta. So now when I start integrating, I leave the integral sign and put the bracket, especially when I have limits. Okay, so I'm going to put my square bracket no integral sign now. This becomes tan theta. Limits now right on this side, pi over 3 and 0. Now I simply have to substitute these values in to get my answer. So this is a quarter. And now I'm going to put the tan of pi over 3 minus the tan of 0. Now the tan of pi over 3 is equal to, if we look at our triangle, we can use a calculator for that, but this is pi over 360 degrees. This is 2. This is 1. This is root 3. It's root 3 over 1. So this is root 3 minus the tan of 0 is 0. So we end up with a quarter times root 3, which is root 3 over 4. I mean, that I could have just used my calculator to get. Radian mode, shift, menu, 2, 2. Radian mode. So you can just press tan of pi over 3 in case you, you don't believe me. Pi over 3. And that gives you root 3. So that's root 3. A quarter of root 3 is root 3 over 4. And there's the answer to this question, question number 4 from this January 2015 paper. So this kind of thing really needs to be known really well. You need to, to in, in order to in, integrate this, you need to know, one, the techniques of, you know, integration by substitution. Two, you need to have some idea of the trig identities how to manipulate them so that you end up with something which you are able to integrate. You need to know your standard results as well. Um, so I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this particular paper will be found in the playlist that should appear in this region over here. Other questions from um, this topic of integration by substitution can be found in the playlist over here. That's for P4 topics. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.